Isn't it a cute horse standing over there? But wait, is it sleeping? In reality, the animal you see is just dozing. It'll still need to lie down to have proper REM, which stands for rapid eye movement sleep. In people, this is the stage when we dream. Your arms and legs can't move during REMs. If they did, you'd start to act your dreams out and could accidentally hurt yourself. But back to that horse. Even though it's only dozing while standing up, that's still an impressive feat. You won't be able to repeat it. Horses have a system of tendons and ligaments that help them stay upright with ease. The major joints in the legs get locked, and the animal can relax and catch some Zs without worrying about crashing to the ground. Oh, by the way, the amount of REM sleep horses need is surprisingly small. Usually, it's a series of short intervals, two or three hours a day in total. That's why they don't have to lie down often. But some animals do it just because they feel more comfortable that way. Horses take naps while standing because sleeping isn't safe enough when they're lying down. It's rather tricky for a horse to get up from the ground, and it's a waste of precious time. While a horse is struggling to get to its feet, some meat-eater can tackle the animal down and uh, make it its dinner. That's why horses only lie down for short periods of time. They also have a special lookout system, when one animal is watching over the others while they're napping. Each member of the herd gets to play the role of the watch horse. Anyway, not only horses, but also zebras, elephants, giraffes, some birds like flamingos, and sometimes even cows can take naps while standing up. But then, why not humans? Well, to pull off this trick, your legs would have to be aligned vertically and your knees be able to lock in place then you wouldn't need much effort to keep yourself upright. But it's not how your body's built. If you're exhausted, you might fall asleep while standing up. But you'd immediately wake up, and this would prevent your body from hitting the floor. Your muscles start to gradually relax during each next stage of sleep. And very soon after you doze off, they won't be able to hold you upright anymore. Shh! It's a quiet winter night and the bird perched on the top tree branch seems to be sleeping. And then there's some noise. A human would hardly notice it, so quiet it is. But the owl, and that's what the bird is, has perfect hearing. It's even more important for this creature than good eyesight. In the blink of an eye, the bird moves. Whoa! It looks like its head is facing backwards. Owls are so flexible, they can twist their heads in an almost full circle. These birds have fixed eye sockets, so it means their eyeballs don't rotate and they somehow have to make up for it. Twisting the head up to 270 degrees is only possible because it's connected to the body in a particular, very clever way. And the tissues and blood vessels where the neck meets the body can't snap. They're designed to flex. Owls also have many vertebrae, tiny bones that make up the spine and neck. It's another thing that helps them perform their head-swiveling trick. Now, you have a totally different neck structure, but it still serves all your needs. Humans have spherical eyes and can move them freely, unlike owls. You simply don't need your neck to turn all the way around. But yes, it would be a great party trick. A goblin shark is swimming unhurriedly through the deep sea when it notices a yummy-looking fish the shark starts to inch closer to its future meal. But the fish notices the hunter and tries to dart away. And then, like in a horror movie, the larger animal thrusts its jaw out of its mouth and grabs the fish. The goblin shark's terrifying jaws are attached to elastic ligaments. They can unfold from its snout for up to 3 inches. It allows the animal to catapult its mouth forward to catch an unfortunate fish or squid or whatnot. If only your mouth could do the same, then you'd be able to munch on stuff dangling 7 inches away from your face without using your hands to grab the food. And no, we're not so concerned about table manners here. So you're lying on your bed in a hotel room in a tropical country and lazily watching a small gecko. It's running across the floor, reaching the wall. Hmm, look, it's scaling it. And right now, it's hanging upside down over your head. Geckos can stick to all kinds of surfaces, thanks to their bulbous toes. They're covered with hundreds of microscopic hairs, and each hair, in turn, splits off into even tinier bristles. This creates such a strong physical bond 
that the hair molecules and the surface molecules start to interact, and it creates an electromagnetic attraction. This method allows geckos to stick and unstick their toes and feet lightning fast. They can dash across different surfaces at 20 body lengths per second. Unfortunately, this super ability is also unavailable for humans. The only thing your fingers and toes can do is wrinkle after being in the water for too long. This improves your grip on wet objects by channeling the water away, just like rain treads in your car tires. And your friends can call you pruny hands. Hey, I didn't say it was a compliment. Each of the tarsier's eyes is as big as the animal's brain. That's a not-so-subtle sign that vision is crucial for these small animals. Their huge eyeballs don't move. A tarsier has to turn its whole head if it needs to look to the left or to the right. On the bright side, ding, the animal can see in almost total darkness and hunt insects, lizards, and small birds even at night. The tarsier's eyes gather and reflect even the tiniest specks of light. It gives the creature a clear picture of what's happening around. That's why these eyes are like the animal kingdom's equivalent of night vision goggles. As for us humans, our eyes are designed in a different way. We see exceptionally well only during daylight hours. In a dark room or outside at night, you're likely to have problems with seeing things or colors well enough. That's because there are two types of light-sensitive organs in the back of your eyes. Some are cone-shaped, others are rod-shaped. The rods help you see in dim light, but they don't let you detect colors. And the cones allow you to see finer details and vibrant hues, but they don't work when the lighting is poor. So, once it's dark, only rods keep responding to available light. But since they can't distinguish colors, you only see different shades of black, gray, and white. Alright, you're sitting on the riverbank watching the water flowing when a lizard runs by at breakneck speed. Yep, right on the water. That's the Bascalus lizard. It has special long toes on its rear feet. They're equipped with fringes of skin that spread out when the animal's moving. This increases the area of contact with the water. It also helps that the lizard is pumping its legs incredibly fast. They slap hard against the surface, and this forms tiny pockets of air. These pockets keep the lizard on top of the water, but only as long as they don't slow down. Now, even if the average person had special shoes shaped like the Bascalus lizard's feet, they'd still have to run at a speed of 65 miles per hour not to go underwater. If you find yourself in the jungle of South and Southeast Asia, beware of snakes. Hey, why are you looking at the ground? I mean, flying snakes! Airborne snakes sound like the stuff from nightmares, but they do exist. Now, they don't actually fly, if there's no strong updraft, that is. These reptiles are gliders. They use the speed of free fall to catch air. Once they do, it's not a problem to generate some lift. Now, at first glance, you won't be able to tell the flying snake from any other. It has a tube-shaped body and no limbs. But then the creature starts to get ready for takeoff. It slithers to the very end of a branch and dangles, creating a J-shape with its body. Once the snake propels itself down, it changes into an S and gets twice flatter than usual. Its round body becomes curved inward and traps air. The reptile can even make turns by moving up and down, like waves on the sea. The coolest thing is that flying snakes are even better gliders than, let's say, the much more famous flying squirrels. Hey, Rocky, 